blue eyes. There's no such thing as blue pigment in human eyes. What you're seeing is scattered light, like the sky playing a trick on your face. Blue eyes are technically colorless. They just reflect shorter wavelengths, the same way the atmosphere does, bouncing back a cool illusion instead of absorbing the light. But here's where things get a bit wild. Every person on Earth with blue eyes, over 500 million of them, descends from the same ancestor, a single human who lived somewhere near the Black Sea around 6,000 to 10,000 years ago. That person had a genetic mutation in the OCA2 gene, which cut melanin levels and let that scattered light show through. It didn't help them to survive the sun, but it did change what people saw when they looked into their eyes. And it caught on. In northern climates where sunlight was weak and food was scarce, blue eyes may have helped people synthesize vitamin D more efficiently. Less melanin meant more UV absorption, which boosted production. In other words, what started as a random mutation turned into a cold weather advantage. And that might be why you see them more in the north, and why those same pale eyes seem to glow brighter under gray skies. Brown Eyes You're running through open grassland, and there are no trees, no shade, just a white hot sun hammering down from above. You blink, and that second of blindness is all it takes to lose your prey. Or maybe your life. That's the problem with weak eyes in a brutal environment, you don't get a second chance. Brown eyes were built for this, packed with melanin, built to handle the heat. While lighter eyes scatter sunlight like glitter bombs, brown eyes absorb it, suppress it, and keep your vision sharp. That's why the earliest humans near the equator had them. Early humans didn't get to squint and look away. If you couldn't see through sunlight, you basically didn't get to eat. These eyes didn't evolve for looks like some of the other ones. They evolved because anything less got you killed. Melanin shields the retina from UV damage and harsh lights and gives brown-eyed people a biological edge in all that harsh light. And that same feature still lives in over 70% of the population today. It may look like a trend, but that's a trait that kept our species alive. And brown eyes didn't stop evolving with the sun. Studies today show they might even process motion faster, like tiny shifts, flickers, movement in the corner of your eye. In a survival setting, that meant spotting danger before it pounced. In a modern setting, maybe it just means you're better at noticing when someone's staring from across the room. Green eyes. If you have green eyes, then congratulations! You have one of the rarest eyes in the world and are amongst 2% of the population. But they're not some perfect mix of blue and brown. They're actually a trick of basic physics and biology. Just enough melanin to avoid looking blue, not enough to turn them brown. So what you get is a hazel green swirl that's constantly shifting depending on the light. But green eyes weren't just born anywhere, they seem to have formed in the misty overlap between Europe and the Middle East, especially places like Scotland, Hungary, and Iran. Regions with cloudy weather and mixed gene pools are perfect for odd mutations to survive. Unlike blue eyes, green doesn't come from one ancestor. It's a cocktail of genes, mainly OCA2 and another called GEY. Together, they dial melanin levels like a dimmer switch, and the result is this forest glass glow that somehow looks different in every photo. Amber eyes they don't look real. Amber eyes almost seem like they're edited in. They glow golden hue, sometimes with a copper tint or a yellow shine. Feels like it belongs in a fantasy game and not on a real person's face. But they're very real, and they're also extremely rare. Only about 0.01% of the world has them. And if that number doesn't seem that low to you, then think about it this way. If you are walking down the street right now, you have more chances to be struck by lightning two times in a row rather than being born with amber eyes. And what makes them different from hazel or brown, aside from the color, is what's behind it. Most eye colors are caused by melanin and the way it bends or bounces light. But amber eyes come from something else. More specifically, a pigment called pheomelanin. It's the same one responsible for red hair and freckles. Instead of just absorbing or bouncing back light, pheomelanin reflects it in a way that looks almost metallic. It creates that warm golden glow, and sometimes so intense, it looks like the person's eyes are lit from the inside. Amber eyes aren't nope. tied to one region or one gene. They've been found in South America, Asia, Eastern Europe, basically scattered in small numbers like secret treasure drops from evolution. Some scientists think it might have been a byproduct of both melanin types, eomelanin and pheomelanin, mixing in just the right amount. And because they're so rare and so striking, people often assume they're wearing colored contacts. Hazel eyes. 
Hazel eyes are the wild card. Not fully green, not fully brown, and somehow both at once. In some lighting, they look amber, in others, mossy green. And if you stare too long, they almost seem to shift like mood rings. Although a lot of people think that this is some sort of color trick, it's actually a fight happening inside your iris. Hazel eyes happen when melanin doesn't distribute evenly. Brown pigments collect in the center, while the outer ring reflects cooler tones like green or gold. Instead of blending smoothly, these zones push against each other. So what you see depends on light, angle, and even what the person's wearing. Some researchers think this uneven spread of pigment is why hazel eyes seem to change color more than any other. And if you have them, then you're pretty rare because only about 5% of the world has them, and they're more common in people with European ancestry. But what's weird is how little we understand them genetically. Because there's actually no hazel gene, they're likely the result of multiple genes interacting with each other, like OCA2, GEY, and possibly others that haven't been identified yet, like nature playing genetic roulette and landing on a gradient. People with hazel eyes might also see better in tricky lighting, not as sharp as brown eyes in the sun, but not as sensitive as blue eyes in the dark, somewhere in the middle, and sometimes that's the sweet spot. Gray eyes. Gray eyes are the rarest normal eye color, if you can even call them that. Less than 1% of people have them, and they don't actually contain gray pigment. What gives them that cold, smoky look is how the collagen in the front of the iris scatters light, flattening out color until it looks like fog in a snowstorm. Genetically, gray eyes are kind of like a cousin of the blues. They also come from low melanin, but with a little twist. The fibers in the iris are denser, which changes how light bounces and dulls any strong hue. Instead of reflecting clean blue like a summer sky, they blur it. That's why gray eyes sometimes look silver, greenish, or even hazel depending on the lighting. They're like a mood ring for your skull. Scientists still aren't totally sure where gray eyes first evolved, but they're most common around the Baltic Sea and parts of Eastern Europe, and often show up with very pale skin and light hair. Basically the human version of stealth mode in a snow biome. Some studies suggest gray eyes might be more sensitive to light than blue, but also sharper in low contrast environments. Not night vision, but maybe a little extra edge when everything else looks washed out. Also, if you have gray eyes, then you might tend to have more visible limbal rings, which is basically the dark circle around the iris. It fades away with age, but when it's strong, it makes the eyes pop even more, like those cartoon characters whose eyes literally sparkle when they like someone, or when they're cooking up an idea. Some researchers think it subconsciously signals youth and health, which might explain why gray eyes get called intense or hypnotic, even when you're just blinking in line at the store. Red eyes. Yes, red eyes are real, but just nope. not the kind you would see in vampires or horror movies. In rare cases of ocular albinism, the iris doesn't have enough pigment to block or reflect light. So when light passes through, it bounces off the blood vessels inside the eye and comes back red. Not colored red, but literally lit up by the color of blood. Under bright light or flash photography, it's even more noticeable. Some eyes can also appear violet or lavender depending on the angle and how the light filters through. That's what gave Elizabeth Taylor her famously purple eyes. She had a rare mix of deep blue-gray and lighting tricks. But people with albinism don't need a trick, the red tint is just part of their biology. It's not just a visual quirk. Because they lack melanin, these eyes are super sensitive to sunlight and harsh light. People with red eyes usually have poor vision and need extra protection outside. But despite how intense they look, they're not dangerous on their own, but simply just misunderstood. There are even some animals with red eyes, like albino rabbits or mice, use that eerie glow as a warning. In humans though, it just means you'll always win most haunted in flash photos. It's one of the rarest eye colors in the world, not because it's hard to inherit, but because the condition behind it is so uncommon. Heterochromia. You've probably seen it before, or not, because it's not nope. so common, but it goes like this. One eye is blue, the other is brown, or there's a splash of green in an otherwise hazel eye. That's heterochromia, when the eyes don't match. And while it looks like some rare superpower, it's usually harmless. There are three types, complete, meaning where each eye is a different color, then we have sectoral, a slice of one eye is a different color, and central, where the iris has rings of multiple shades. Most of the time it's just a fun surprise from your DNA. It can happen from tiny changes during development, or from genes deciding to express pigment unevenly. 
But it's not always something you're born with. Eye injuries, certain medications, or even conditions like Horner's syndrome can cause it later in life. So if your eyes suddenly change color, it's worth checking out. Some researchers think heterochromia might have been more common in ancient populations, but got filtered out over time. Today, it shows up in less than 1% of people, but it's more common in animals, especially in certain cats, dogs, and horses. In humans, though, it's usually just a cool party trick. And if you've got it, congrats. You're carrying around your own built-in contrast mode. Black eyes. Black eyes can look so dark and intense, it's like they stepped out of a sci-fi movie. So dark and black that you can't see the iris. But they're not actually black, but they're close enough that most people don't notice. What we call black eyes are really just very dark brown, so dark that light barely bounces off them. This happens when the eye is loaded with melanin, the same stuff that gives brown eyes their strength gets cranked up to max here, and when it does, it doesn't scatter light like blue or reflect gold like amber, it just takes it in and swallows it whole. You'll see it most in people from sunny, hot equatorial regions, places where staring at the horizon without protection could fry your vision in a few years. Black eyes are like nature's sunglasses. You don't need to squint because your eyes already did the work for you. Under normal lighting, they look flat, but if you catch them in just the right light, sometimes you'll see a deep red or bronze tint under the surface, like glowing coals under ash. Eye rings. Kaiser Fleischer rings. Imagine looking in the mirror and noticing a weird golden ring circling your iris. Not on your skin, but inside your actual eye. Most people wouldn't think liver problem, but that's exactly what it can mean. Those are called Kaiser Fleischer rings, and they show up when copper starts building up in the body. Normally, your liver filters out excess copper, but in people with Wilson's disease, nope. it doesn't. So the metal gets stuck in places it doesn't belong, like your brain and your eyes. The ring forms at the edge of the iris, right near the cornea. It's not always obvious, but sometimes it's faint, like a shadow. Other times it catches the light with a weird bronze shine, like someone smudged eyeliner on the inside of your eyeball. It's one of those rare signs that can show up before you even feel sick. Doctors use a special lamp to spot it, and if they catch it early, it can actually lead to life-saving treatment. And here's the weird part, it doesn't always go away, even after treatment. Some people keep the ring like a medical souvenir proof their eyeballs once tried to snitch on their liver.